start of a chord variation and you maybe see it. All right, counsel, Mr. Leontari, Mr. Hagen, how did you make out on the motion for the Very We made out well. Um, we spent a good deal of time on the phone with uh, Ms. Kenny Bodden, and we have agreement on all of the items. What we were asking, it was actually Ms. Kenny Bodden's idea, I think it makes sense, is that we are going to reduce to writing the agreement um, and submit it to the court as an agreement of the parties relative to this government. Yes, you're agreeable. Agreeable. And when would you have that written agreement? Unfortunately, Ms. Kenny Bodden is, is leaving uh, the state for some time, so we talked about her. We will have a draft for her, and um, she will be back on the 9th of January, so we expect to file it probably on the 10th after she has a chance to review it. All right. And with regard to the terms of the agreement, are efforts underway now to obtain and, and distribute the materials sought? Yes. What I don't want to find is, is a delay in providing anything until the agreement is formalized and filed. No, we will make sure that they start working on that now. And in that regard, State Police Crime Lab has asked for 30 days. We'll do our best to shorten that as much as possible on the items that they need to provide. Uh, well, yes, uh, we don't want to have the clock start ticking somewhere around January 13th then have some claim of surprise and then having the exclusion of otherwise relevant evidence because it wasn't produced in time. So you're aware of all yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, then we will table that motion at the request of the parties. What does that leave us uh, by way of the defendant's motions? Mr. Uh, nothing here. Uh, nothing else you're on for today. Uh, I would like to bring to the attention of the court, I uh, filed today an affidavit with supporting documentation uh, relative to the, we'll call it the suppression motion on the uh, automobile. Uh, I would suggest an impoundment of that affidavit given the uh, expert witnesses of the Commonwealth and the uh, nature of that report. It's up to the court. Uh, All right. Uh, and get a number of attached reports and materials. And explain to me the, the basis for impoundment. Uh, they're fairly graphic pictures of the events. There's uh, a very detailed analysis of what took place. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that most of that information is in the public domain. I don't think that any of it is, or very little of it is. Uh, there are conclusions there. Uh, that are going to be examined uh, uh, at trial through the testimony of that expert. Those are expert, two reports by the same expert for the Commonwealth. The ballistics report, firearms report, materials report. Commonwealth, what's your position on that? Your Honor, I think that makes sense to impound that. All right. Until I read all of the materials, uh, but I'd be inclined to impound with both sides. Think it's appropriate and uh, protects the defendant's rights to a fair trial. Uh, so I'll take that under advisement. Anything else? Uh, no, Your Honor. I just think that we need to uh, think about the schedule with respect to the remaining motions uh, and, and possibly see if we can set another hearing day. Uh, uh, Mr. Hagen, you have a motion for a reciprocal discovery. We do, and I uh, discussed that briefly with counsel. Yep. I believe uh, counsel <coughs> will assent or agree to the motion uh, as written by the Commonwealth reciprocal discovery motion with a date of uh, two weeks prior to trial for compliance, which would be on or about February 1. Is that agreeable to you? Uh, your Honor, the date is fine in terms of the discovery. I just would like to defer for uh, a few days to make sure that my co-counsel has reviewed the discovery request. I, I didn't see anything there that's out of the ordinary in my in my view. But uh, So I think I can represent that if there is a specific objection, we'll get it right out in this case. Well, 
let's assume the motion is allowed by agreement, and if something pops up, alert the Commonwealth as quickly as you can, uh, and then you all can bring it to my attention. Uh, all right. As to a next hearing date, uh, as we come closer to February 13, uh, Mr. Leontay, you indicate you're working on some jury selection related motions. Yes, Your Honor, and we uh, can get those filed uh, by the next hearing day. Well, tell me what they would be in, in broad strokes. Uh, there are a number of them, including uh, filing uh, an expanded questionnaire, uh, the disclosure by the court of a full of the full impanelment process, uh, the right of the voir dire, and what's going to how the voir dire is going to work, how the preemptory, how the uh, full cause challenges are going to work versus preemptory. I, I know sometimes uh, you may go through the pool on the full cause and then end up with the preemptory. I, I don't know. It's honest practice. Uh, We've got a uh, motion for the individual voir dire. I don't think the court will have a problem with that one. Um, so it's the more of the, well, I don't think anything's unusual here. Let me tell you right now what I'm contemplating, and, and maybe it will help either save you time in not having to file a motion or help you to focus the motion. But as of right now, uh, I plan to have three sets 200 jurors brought to this courthouse on February 13, 14, and 15. Uh, we will open the session in the jury room. That is, we'll move the courtroom down to the jury room uh, on those three dates. Uh, my plan is to have all counsel present, to have Mr. Hernandez present, to introduce the case to the jury pool uh, and to give them some idea of what the case involves and how long the case is anticipated to be. Uh, I would intend, time permitting that day, and I think that it will, that we could hear from any jurors who have a hardship excuse uh, and deal with them uh, at the time. As to those jurors that do not claim hardship, that are able to give us the time necessary, uh, then put to them a written questionnaire and give them instructions on how to complete that. And then excuse them. Uh, and repeat that process over the course of three days. In Suffolk County, we tend to get a fair number of uh, college students in our jury pool. And if this is a case that's gonna go for 30, 40, or more days, that becomes very difficult for someone who's paying the tens of thousands of dollars that college kids now pay for their education. It's a way of saying that uh, there is a practice in this court uh, of excusing uh, full-time uh, day college students uh, from extended trials. Uh, so I would think that having dealt with hardships, we'll end up with some number less than 200 per day. I don't know what that number may be, but it may give us an otherwise eligible pool at least as it relates to the time of hopefully somewhere around 300 jurors who would then be required to complete questionnaires. Those questionnaires would be photocopied and made available to counsel and to the court and would serve as the basis then for further impanelment. Further impanelment would then involve uh, putting questions to the jurors either in groups or in groups and or in individual blood here. Uh, it, it may be that we can 
put the so-called statutory questions to the pool as a whole downstairs. Uh, and then case focus questions or defendant focus questions would become appropriate for individual voir dire as well as for inclusion in any questionnaire. Uh, after we have made inquiry of the broad jury pools over the course of three days, then we will continue the impanelment process in courtroom 906, one flight up, uh, directly adjacent to this side of the building and where this courtroom would be. Uh, we will try this case in courtroom 906, it being a larger courtroom able to accommodate uh, a larger audience. Uh, and I would expect that we would do individual voir dire in 906, likely using a table format, given the number of people involved, uh, that would include <coughs> attorney conducted voir dire. Uh, because we'll be doing individual voir dire and questions will be put to each juror, then I'm going to require that counsel exercise peremptories as that juror is determined to be indifferent. Uh, that is, if a juror is tentatively seated after individual voir dire, they will remain with us for the trial. Uh, I will hear any challenges for cause uh, first after I've asked any individual voir dire questions and then if either counsel want to be heard after attorney conducted voir dire, I will hear challenges for cause. Only after hearing that and determining that a juror is different, capable of serving, would I turn to counsel for peremptories. Uh, I don't know what number of jurors we will see, whether we see 16 or 18, depends a little bit on the length of the case, but each side will have a number of peremptories equal to those to be seen, either 16 or 18. Uh, so that's how I think we will proceed. If, if time permits, and we could meet with the first panel on February 13 at 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m., uh, go through the hardships, get questionnaires out to that group. It may be that we can begin to bring some of those people back on Wednesday the, uh, the 15th, uh, perhaps in the afternoon, to begin the individual I think that depends a little bit on how long it takes to get through the uh, broader pool each morning and deal with hardships and whether we put statutory questions to them down there. Uh, is that clear so far? Yes, sir. Uh, one quick question, Your Honor. On the uh, initial uh, screen for hardship, and you haven't filled out the questionnaires, that, I assume, is just a standard statutory questionnaire, not the expanded questionnaires in which we're going to look at later on? No, it would be the expanded questionnaire. I, but, okay. Okay, thank you. Is that unclear? Let me, let me clarify. When we go down to see the jurors, we'll be given the statutory form, right. which has three questions, basically, uh, and then has some identifying information. So everyone will receive that as, as we commence. Uh, and we'll deal with hardships and perhaps uh, some form of statutory questions about bias, prejudice, uh, physical incapacity or disability, those sorts of issues, and the hardship as it relates to uh, time and the length of trial and uh, schedule for the trial. Then I would expect that we would distribute 
the extended questionnaire as it's been approved, requiring jurors to complete that before they leave the courthouse. So that uh, at the end of that process, the court office, the jury offices will have a complete set of the questionnaires of those not excused for a hardship or some of that. You with me? Yep. Uh, that will then give the clerk's office the opportunity, or uh, our court staff, the opportunity to make multiple copies of those questionnaires for distribution to counsel, hopefully by the following day. Uh, so that means we'll get the full array of, of both statutory and expanded questionnaires to hopefully the following day after each array? That's the hope. Okay. Uh, and it, at least in my experience, and I've done this a little bit uh, this point in time, it seems to me that there are some questions, the answers to which consistently send a pretty clear signal. Uh, and so you may have 40 questions, but uh, five of them become almost the litmus test questions, at least for excusing terms. Uh, and uh, in my experience, it doesn't take terribly long to be able to skim through the questionnaire to see what is of, of concern. Uh, we'll see if that turns out to be true, but experientially that's been the case. Uh, all right, any, any thought on that process or comment on it or confusion about it? Commonwealth? The defense. No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, all right, I understand you all have looked at your calendars as to when you could be available and Mr. Bias would be available. Now, do I understand you talked about uh, sometime the third week of January? Yes, sir. When would that be? Uh, I think the 19th seems, 19th seems the best from what I understand from us. Okay. Sorry, right. Why don't we put it on then January 19th at 2 o'clock? Uh, now, Council, I'm going to uh, ask that any motions relating to empanelment, any proposed questions to be put to jurors, uh, or any draft questionnaire that either side is working on, be filed with the court uh, by the end of Friday the 13th. Uh, and that will give me an opportunity to look them over and maybe uh, craft some proposed uh, set of questions that we could review on the 19th. Uh, is that doable? That's three weeks' time for you folks. Your Honor, just because I know we're, we're, could, could we have the weekend as well rather than just Friday? Do you get up here on Monday? Uh, Monday's a holiday. Oh, well. So the answer to that would be no. Uh, I'm giving you three weeks. I'm giving myself three days. So you get the better of the deal. Uh, Okay, what else? Nothing? Nothing, Your Honor. Nothing on behalf of Mr. Hernandez. All right, then I'll see you on, fr on Thursday the 19th with filings by Friday the 13th. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to continue by court to January 19th, 2017, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon here at home. 808 process will issue to a short. Parents, any motions must be filed by January 13th.